in the aftermath of the release of that police video showing the beating of Tyree Nichols in Memphis, there are renewed talks for police reform on Capitol Hill. Democrats and Republicans are split on how to change police culture at the federal level. Amy Lou is in Washington. Well, Patrick, Democrats want to move legislation forward. They proposed back in 2021 a bill that faced resistance from Republicans as negotiations failed nearing a compromise. Nothing. Calls for action following another deadly encounter with police, this time in Memphis. This is a call for all of us to really be honest about the situation. And to Congress as lawmakers weigh how best to address policing at the federal level. Democrats are once again pushing bipartisan talks over reform, including the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, a bill that would ban chokeholds, no-knock warrants, and make it easier to sue police officers over bad actions. There was no chokeholds used there. What they did there was just just continue to beat this, this Mr. Nichols. And so I don't know if that's the answer. But new legislation must first get Republicans approval in the House, who argue instead for reform in the states. While Democrats open up the conversation and the opportunity to compromise upping strict regulations. We're so far past that right now that we need to really uh, kind of escalate the conversation a, a lot faster than we are. In a statement, President Biden renewed his call for Congress to send the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act to his desk. He also said that the justices system should do its work and let the courts make their judgments in the case of Tyree Nichols. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu, WIFF News 4. For the first time since becoming Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy will meet with President Biden on Wednesday of this week. Among the issues to be addressed, the U.S. debt ceiling. A White House spokesperson says Biden will ask McCarthy if he, quote, intends to meet his constitutional obligation to prevent a national default. I want to sit down together, work out an agreement that we can move forward to put us on a path to balance at the same time, not put any any of our debt in jeopardy at the same time. Earlier this month, White House administration says that uh, the two would meet on a range of topics this week and insisted raising the debt limit was, quote, not negotiable. A four year old Indiana transplant recipient is honoring his donor with a special gift. Hot Wheels. The toys will be donated to children's hospitals in Indianapolis and in Chicago. John Duran reports. Ready? Beckett Culp's just four years old with a motor that won't stop. But that wasn't the case his last visit to Riley Hospital. I was getting surgery and I was sick here. Beckett needed a new liver. He was put on the transplant list um, in April. And all mom and dad could do was wait. I believe he was on the transplant list about 52 days before we got the call. From the hospital, about a donor, Hunter. Once we got to the point where there was, where I couldn't help him, I knew he would want to help whoever he could. Nikita Tizinski's seven-year-old son passed away in June. His organs helped save three lives, including Beckett's. How can you thank somebody for such an amazing gift? In this case, not with words. It's a hot wheel, big wheel. But a truckload of Hunter's favorite things. We learned that he loved Hot Wheels just like Beckett. And so we're like, well, let's make it a Hot Wheels specific toy drive. To give to patients at Riley Hospital for Children and Comer Children's Hospital in Chicago where Hunter was treated. I hope it's not heavy. The month-long toy drive even caught the attention of Hot Wheels. We were absolutely blown away by that. <laughs> Instant tears. With over 2,500 donations and counting. Really the, the lining we needed, like my family needed to in this dark time. All in Hunter's memory. She wants to show that he is a superhero and he is. Like he saved these lives and and I'm honored to be his mom. And she suspects her son didn't miss a thing. He would be amazed. And I know he's, I'm, you know, I'm sure he's seeing it. Okay, we done. Okay, that was John Duran reporting there. Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin used social media Saturday to express his gratitude and his appreciation for all of the support he's received during his recovery. Take a listen. Well, I'm so thankful to everybody. I know that it isn't enough just to be thankful. This is just the beginning of the impact that I wanted to have on the world. And with God's guidance, I will continue to do wonderful and great things. I couldn't do this without any of the support and the love. And I can't wait to continue to take y'all on this journey with me. 
In the video on Instagram, he said it was important for him to wait to speak publicly until he had time to process all that he's been through. He thanked the Bills training and medical staff. He also thanked the medical team in Cincinnati who treated him after his cardiac arrest during that game with the Bengals. He also said the kids who sent him letters and gifts during his recovery made his day every day. 654 now, the Boone Police Department in North Carolina has picked a new design for their cruisers. Take a look here. Uh, the department says it received more than 50 submissions since the opening of the contest last August, and five were chosen by officers and then presented to the town council for final approval. The design was submitted anonymously by Marty Shu. He owns and operates a graphic design company. He submitted anonymously because he did not want to jeopardize the integrity of the competition because it turns out Shu is the father of one of the department's police officers. There you see the both of them. He says that this was something very special for him to be a part of.